In this video, I'm going to show you how to knit these fingerless gloves. Hey, it's Denise from LumaHat.com. For more information, visit the website. All right, guys, let's begin. First, secure your yarn. I'm gonna tie a simple knot to my anchor peg. You can do a slip knot if that's easier. And then take the working yarn and you're gonna put it between the first and last peg. I'm going to the right, you can go to the left. It has no effect on this pattern. And then we're gonna wrap each peg. Once you wrap that last peg, we're going to start with the U-wrap knit stitch where you half wrap the peg and then knit off. Go to the next one, half wrap, and knit off. Just continue until you've done all 24 pegs. Once you knit off that last peg, you are done with your cast on and we're ready for rows one through five where you will do a knit one, purl one stitch pattern. But first, this is the part where you can go ahead and remove the knot off the anchor peg. All right, so again, we're doing that knit one right here on peg one. So you're gonna half wrap your peg and knit off. And then you're going to go to the next peg and we're going to do a purl. So from the top with your hook, scoop up your yarn and create a new loop right here. That's the old loop. And you're going to take that one off the peg and put the new loop on and pull. Repeat that. You're going to knit one, half wrap your peg and knit off. Then take your working yarn and you're going to put it under the existing loop with your hook. Scoop up the yarn and create a new loop. And the old one here, you're going to take it off the peg and you're going to put the new loop on and then pull the string to tighten your yarn. Okay, you're going to repeat it. You're going to knit one and purl one. And continue to do this until you've done all of your pegs. Remember that you need to do five rows in total. Finish those five rows and then you're ready for the wrist portion of the gloves and for that we're going to do a loop one knit one pattern. Take the working yarn and we're going to wrap that peg one three times. So one, two, and three and that's going to leave us with four loops. One, two, three, four. Now take your hook, grab that fourth loop and knit off. This will be a knit three together, which will leave you three loops. Of those three, you're going to unravel one, two to create a new loop. Put that one between pegs one and two, and then get the working yarn and wrap peg one again. That will be your loop one, okay? Next on the pattern is the knit one. So the next peg you're going to half wrap and knit off and that will be your knit one. All right, let's repeat that again. So we're going to take the working yarn on the next peg and wrap it three times. One, two, and 
three. Get your hook and that loop number four right here. We're going to hook it, knit off, and now we're left with three. Of those three loops, we're going to unravel one, two loops, create a new loop, put it to the side, take the working yarn, wrap that peg, and knit off. And here you repeat it, that loop one. Now you're going to take your working yarn, right? And you're going to half wrap the next peg and knit off for the knit one. And you're going to repeat this process again. You ready? One, two, and three. And get that loop number four and knit off so you've done a knit three together. Unravel the top two loops. Create a new loop, put it between those two pegs right there in the middle and then wrap your peg again, that same peg, knit off and you've completed the loop one. Now you need to do your knit one. This is not a knit, sorry about that. Got a little confused, let's undo that. Here's your knit one. Half wrap and knit off. Yeah, sometimes I get a little confused. So sorry. Probably too much music in the background. All right, guys. Just continue this two stitch pattern until you've done all 24 pegs. For row seven, you're just gonna do a knit one, purl one, and you guys are already experts. Once you finish the knit one, purl one row, we're ready for row eight which looks very much like seven, except this time you're going to knit one, loop one. So your first peg, here's a knit, and here you're gonna loop. So remember, half wrap and knit off that peg, and then you're gonna do your loopy process here. So you're gonna wrap three times, knit off that bottom, that fourth loop over the three, which is a knit three together, Unravel the top two, put it to the side, wrap the peg, and knit off. Now you go to the next one, you half wrap, and you knit off. So it is exactly like row seven, except you started with a knit one, loop one, for this row, which is row eight. So go ahead and do all of your rows, and then we're ready for nine, which looks a lot like seven, and it's a knit one Pearl one. After that, all you're going to do is repeat rows six through nine one more time for a total of 13 rows, and then you do rows 14 through 21 as a knit one. Pearl one, which means that you need to knit eight rows of the knit one purl one for a total of 21 rows. Once you're done with that part, things are going to change. We're going to be knitting flat. This means that you're knitting back and forth instead of in the round. That's because we're going to be knitting the thumb portion of the project. And so for row 22, which is our next row, we're going to do a knit one purl one. But when we go to row 23, we're going to change that and we're going to do a purl one knit one. So here we are on peg one and we do that knit one and then the purl one and continue the two stitch pattern starting with peg one until we reach peg 24, which is right here. In this case, once you finish with that peg, you're going to take the working yarn and you're going to turn to go in the opposite direction. So normally you would come right here to peg one from 24 to peg one if you are knitting in the round, right? But that's not what you're doing. You're going to be knitting back 
and forth and back and forth. And because we're going in the opposite direction, this peg right here is going to be a purl one because we want to stack the same stitches on the pegs. So you knit a purl one coming, you're gonna knit a purl one going, and then you're going to do a knit one because that's what you did on this peg before. So that's why I mark my pegs. It helps me to stay on track. I know where I did my knits and I know where I did my purls. Repeat rows 22 and 23 three more times for a total of 29 rows. Next, we're gonna work the palm section, which is rows 30 through 34. We're gonna do a knit one, purl one, but this time in the round. At this point, you should clearly see that you have an opening for your thumb right here. So you're gonna take your working yarn from peg 24 over to peg one and start the stitch pattern, which is a knit one. And see, no longer is there an opening. Your next peg will be a purl one. And you continue, knit one, purl one. But as I said, at this point, we're knitting in the round. Remember that you need to do five rows and then you're ready for the bind off. We're gonna do the super stretchy, but the hacked version. So take the working yarn and you're gonna wrap it around your loom at least two times. You'll see me do it only one and a half here. That's not a good idea. Go ahead and go completely around twice or two and a half and then cut your yarn. You're then going to take your working yarn and you're going to thread a needle. By the way, I now only use these metal needles so much better than the plastic ones. All right, you're gonna skip that first peg right here and go to the next one. Take the needle from the bottom up and feed the yarn through that loop. And then you're gonna go back to the peg that you skipped and from the top, feed the needle down, push it down and feed that yarn through that loop. And then take your needle and again, you're gonna skip that next peg and go to the third from the bottom up, feed your yarn and go back to the one that you skipped and from the top down. You're gonna push the needle in order to feed the yarn through that loop and pull on it nice and tight because you want it to be as tight as possible. And then you're gonna take your hook and remove the loop from peg one. Now you're down to two pegs, but you're always working with three. And so you're gonna skip one and go to the third peg from the bottom up, feed the yarn, from the top down, you went back to the peg that you skipped and you're gonna feed your yarn through that middle peg all the way. And then you're gonna get your hook. Doesn't have to be a hook. You can actually do this with the needle or your fingers. Remove the loop from that first peg and you start the process all over again. You're gonna skip that one, go to this one from the bottom up and then from the top down. And again, tighten that yarn nice and tight and then remove it. If you don't remove it, the yarn will come out kind of loose. So you want to be uh, nice and tight and start the process all over again.
All right, you've gotten to the end of the line and here's peg, last peg. You're gonna feed it upward, go back to the one you skip from the top down, and then you're going to go back to that last peg and from the bottom go up. And now you can release all of these loops from the peg because basically you are done with the bind off. And as you can see, I don't have a long tail. That's where I made my mistake. So that's why I tell you to make sure you do enough um, of the yarn at the uh, end. And this is the trick I'm having to use in order to um, be able to get that yarn weaved in and finish it so it looks nice and neat. Um, and I actually don't have enough to continue with the needle, so I have to use a crochet hook. And there you go. Um, the bind off is complete. And to weave in your ends, just go ahead and take that crochet hook and bring the leftover yarn uh, into the uh, inside of your project and I usually will feed it through the little knots um, of my stitch and I'll go upward until I've done about four or five of them and then I turn around and bring it down before I cut I kind of feel it makes it more secure and there you go there is your glove and you can tighten so that the bottom looks like the top this is optional I do tighten my cast on stitches um, and I'll put a link in the description for a video specifically for tightening your cast on stitches again that's optional you don't have to do it but it sure does neaten things up and it looks way better in my opinion once you've pulled all of these um, stitches, you'll have a really long tail. And just like you did, um, you have to do for the top portion, you do the same thing for um, this part um, of your yarn. You're going to weave it in. Uh, you know, you could use a needle or your crochet hook. And in my case, I added some beads. Make sure you use a needle that will feed through the beads and then I just used some nylon thread in order um, to add the beads. Special thanks to Carol, Lori, and Valerie for covering the cost of closed captioning. Alright guys remember to comment, share, subscribe, and come back and loom with me.